everything we believe about God needs to be based on the, the Word of God. Everything we believe about God needs to be based on the, the Word of God. When they do not speak according to this Word, they have no light. As Jehovah's Witnesses, we truly love the Bible. When studying God's Word, ask yourself these questions and then do research in our publications. In our publications. Based on the teachings of Jesus, the foundation of the truth, we ask the question, how are we building on the foundation? And remember, this will be fake news and many, most people will believe in it. Hello and welcome to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally and we are back with another episode of Watchtower versus the Bible. Or nice shot. I think we called it something like that, but this is where we jump into the Thunderdome. We get into the old crucible of craziness and we look at Watchtower teachings or policies that directly have no precedence in the Bible. So this time it was clear what everyone wanted by the comment section of the last one. Last time we talked about dress and grooming, tight pants, funny stories, ha ha he he. And everyone said this next episode needs to be about beards. So we are going to be examining beards lately and stay tuned because I'm going to call the branch office and see if they can give me any direct clarity on what the policies and procedures are going to be here in America. Anyway, thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this going forward. If you're wondering why the light's a little bit different, it's because it's very hot in here. And I've decided to just up the ISO on the camera because I don't have to use my lights, which burn really hot, and then I won't be killed. So anyway, with all of that, let's do this thing. Zizi, are you ready? He's ready. Now, let's kick things off by examining what is actually in the Bible about beards. And the answer I actually found was a little bit surprising uh, because when you do a little bit of research, you find that there is actually a biblical precedence to not wearing a beard. So if you go over here to, um, man, I forgot the scripture. Um, give me a second. I, I know it's here. I know it's here. Just um, just just give me a second. No, it's not right. Uh, different word for beard. Hey man, how the hell you doing? I've been just fine living life. I know it's here. I mean, it's gotta be here. It's, it's gotta be here. It's just my keyboard. It, it, there is nothing in the Bible that you could possibly conjure up in your imagination that would directly prohibit beards. And that's the whole point of the series is, as far as we can tell, God created man in his image. So even whenever we get depictions of, of Jesus and God and the angels in heaven, what do we always see them wearing? They're all, all of the men there have beards. And yet... For some reason, which we'll get to, the Jehovah's Witnesses think, no, 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 amigo, a beard is a bad thing. We even had an instance in the convention where they were depicting people in paradise and they were all perfectly out of a Gillette commercial. I mean, they had the water was running down their face. Even the resurrected Joseph had come out and looked like he had just gotten a bronze brawn series seven shape. Now there is a particularly hilarious rule about 
even growing a beard to portray someone in the Bible. Yes, they have a rule that says if you're going to portray a biblical character that no doubt had a beard, you can't grow a beard even for that. You have to wear a, a nonsensical uh, Walmart fake beard in order to, to fulfill this assignment. And that is how far they are willing to go. E even when an assignment would require it, no, you can't do it. Just get some good old polyester and a little bit of a itch and a rash, and we'll see how it works out for you. Now, if you are a Jehovah's Witness watching this, you might be thinking, what's the big deal here? Why would we want to needlessly stumble someone just to insist on having facial hair? Isn't our spirituality, isn't the spirituality of our brothers and sisters more important than insisting on some personal right that allows us to have facial hair? Well, that is the exact same line that I told myself while I was an active Jehovah's Witness. And uh, let me give you a situation on how this really came up. There was someone that showed up to the Kingdom Hall that hadn't been there for a couple weeks, and they were assigned to give a talk. Now, when they showed up, they had a full beard, and no one really caught it at the time. And they were going, like, minutes before they were about to go up and give their talk, the uh what was it the school overseer realized that he was sporting a beard and now all of a sudden there's all of this huge commotion it's like that we see that there's a nuclear missile headed towards and we're scrambling the fighter jets the, the alarm bells are ringing everyone's losing their minds and at in the end they basically said hey sorry you can't give this talk because you're wearing a beard and at the time, I thought to myself, well, man, you kn you kind of knew this was going to happen. People don't wear beards. Why are you being insistent on this? But now, if that is what you're telling yourself or that's, you know, your mindset, ask yourself this question. Why is it the average Jehovah's Witness that needs to change on this? And why can't it just be a Watchtower policy? If this organization, as they claim, is run off of principles and not rules, then why doesn't Watchtower just stop insisting that people don't in America don't wear beards? Why is it on average Jehovah's Witnesses to take up this burden? And if you went around and took a poll, I guarantee you that most Jeho there would be a majority of Jehovah's Witnesses that said, yeah, I would at least like to have the option of having a beard or a goatee or something like that. I would at least like to have that option. It, it, go around, ask your friends that were Jehovah's Witnesses, that know Jehovah, that are. I guarantee you that there will be a majority that would at least like to have the option. And you can find... The answer is so easy because what happens when Jehovah's Witnesses go on vacation? Elders, servants, pioneers, hell, circuit overseers, the governing body maybe. They don't shave. They're like, well, hey, I'm out here on vacation and, you know, it's kind of nice. I don't have to shave. Me and all of my friends did it. My dad did it. All of his friends did it. Whenever they'd go camping, no one would shave. Sometimes they'd cut it into a goatee because it's like, hey, I just kind of want to see what it looks like. And I'm not going to be out in service and giving parts on the meeting so I can let it go a little bit. That to me is a demonstration that they would at least like to have the option. And Watchtower is the one that's insisting so this, this thought process or this line of reasoning that, well, we don't want to stumble people. Why doesn't Watchtower, why don't the people making and insisting on these rules, why don't they want to avoid stumbling people? If we're not meant to stumble people, how come they are allowed to do it willy-nilly and have an ultimate get-out-of-jail-free card? It doesn't make any logical sense, and it just doesn't follow when you break it down specifically. And remember, this is not in the Bible. There's not a biblical basis other than not wanting to offend someone. 
So Watchtower can offend us till the cows come home, but we wouldn't want to offend someone that doesn't like facial hair. And on this point of someone that doesn't like facial hair, there are plenty of people that don't like mustaches. Oh, there are lots yeah. of, I would argue that there are more people that get annoyed or upset over someone that wears a mustache than a beard. And that fact alone is wild to me because mustaches are completely allowed. And, and I know I always say the same thing, but why is it okay to have hair here and here on your face, but you can't have it here? And, and then you get the weird thing like, well, how far can my sideburns go down? And that becomes problematic after a while as well. Hello, I was calling uh, to get some information on why Jehovah's w I never see Jehovah's Witnesses wearing beards. So, um, are you one of Jehovah's Witnesses? Um, no. Okay. One moment, please. Let me transfer you to the correct department. Thank you. Good afternoon, Service Department Front Desk. Can my director call? Hi, I was uh, just curious on why I never see Jehovah's Witnesses wearing beards, and I couldn't find anything when I like typed it in on your guys' website, so I saw a number to call, so I thought I'd just give you a ring. Yeah, no, we appreciate it. This is actually just the front desk, and we switched the calls directly to where they could be further assisted. So I'm going to assist your, or not assist your call, but send you to a someone that can further assist you with your inquiry. Which state are you calling from? Pardon? Which state are you calling from? Because we divvy it up by states. Oh, okay. Uh, here. Oh, okay. I live in Washington. Washington State. Okay. Give me one moment and I'll transfer you over to the Washington desk. Okay. Hello, um, I was just looking at uh, some of the material on JW.org, and I was just curious on why Jehovah's Witnesses ostensibly don't wear beards. I, I just found it kind of weird, and I couldn't find any answers on your guys' website. Okay, no problem. Can I ask what uh, state you're calling from? Uh, you're the second person to ask that. Uh, Washington. Okay, no problem, my brother. Can I just put you on a brief hold? Okay. Thank you very much. Can we stop this cruel game and allow the boy to keep one shred of dignity? For God's sakes, I can't stand to see him in all this pain. You vicious bastards! Good afternoon, service department. Hey, you. Um, I was just curious, uh, I was on your guys' website, and I couldn't find any information on why I never see Jehovah's Witnesses wearing uh, beards. And then in some of uh, the videos that I had uh, watched, like, no one was ever wearing beards either. So I, I just was kind of curious, like, w if there was a reason for that. Um, there, there might be in some cases, uh, there are some witnesses, not very many, I should say, that do wear a beard um, and, not, oh. and not everywhere either but uh, if you'd like you can send a letter to our address there in our website uh -huh. uh, with even that question and we'd be glad to send you something in oh. the mail 
Oh, okay. Um, you couldn't just answer that for me now, though. I... No, no. We have we have so many calls. Uh, these questions um, are sent in in writing, and we do have a team that uh, responds to you know quest- different questions. Okay. Well, I mean, like just if I if I know you have you're probably very busy, but if I could just have like two minutes. Um, is is there like any like rule saying it? The the reason that really caught my attention was in one of the newer videos. I think they were showing something like in the future when people were like living on Earth or some. Sorry, I'm not terribly familiar with the whole context, but it was like someone from like biblical times that was resurrected, and they were like clean shaven, and everyone at the the table was clean shaven, so I just was curious if there's like an actual rule on that, or if it's just happenstance, or, uh, or like none of the people I ever saw in any of the videos were wearing a beard either. So I just assumed it was a rule and wanted to know if it was or not. Mm, no, no, no rule. Oh, okay, so they witnesses could wear a beard if they wanted to. Yeah, so, some actually do. Oh, okay. Well. Uh, is there a reason then they're not like in the videos or is it just random circumstance? Um, I'm sorry. Like I said, you can just send in, send it in in writing and whatever questions you have, we'll be happy to reply. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, oh. We, we thank you for your patience on that. Uh, oh, all righty. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, take care. Well, I, that wasn't very productive, <laughs> but apparently, uh, yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses are free to wear beards if they want. Uh, he didn't seem too interested in answering why they didn't show any on their videos. But we've let Watchtower speak for themselves, and what they said was, write us a letter so we can give that to you in writing. But I don't feel like waiting for that, so uh, yeah, let's move on. So now we need to do uh, what we're trying to accomplish in all of these videos, and that is look into the precedents that we can see that God himself said in the Bible, and then compare that to what is actually happening within Watchtower, because it clues us in if Watchtower is truly God's one true organization. So what is God's precedent? He has said throughout the years, he doesn't care. He literally created us in his image and We are created to grow beards, right? So you think about every single person that wrote the Bible or is supposed to have written the Bible or the people that watched our claims have written the Bible. All of them had beards. Jesus, he had a beard. The apostles, they all had beards. Even the founder of what was to become the watchtower that we know and so much despise today, uh, Charles Taze Russell, He even had a beard, and it was fine back then. So throughout all of this history, from Adam to Russell, the entire expanse of Jehovah's Witness theology, you know, the the secret mystery being revealed throughout the ages, God was completely fine with beards. And no doubt there are civilizations throughout history that, you know, maybe it wasn't popular to have a beard. Maybe being clean shaven was the appropriate thing to do. And yet the Bible is silent on that. They didn't change back then. Like, well, we're trying to assimilate as, you know, part of the Roman Empire. So we're going to need everyone to to shave off their their beards because we don't want to be identified as these rabble rousers, these people on the fringes of society. We want to sort of blend in. That way our message is more acceptable. No, they didn't have anything like that back then because from what we can read in the pages of the Bible, if you are a believer or otherwise, there is no reason to think that God has any care whatsoever to have to not have a beard. In fact, it would almost indicate that it's preferable to be sporting a beard rather than having a clean shaven face. And then we get up to Rutherford. And everything changed with Rutherford because he was trying to change the image of Watchtower. He was trying to rebrand and remake it in his image. And he didn't want anything to do with these 
dirty, disgusting, crumb-filled, maggot-written beards of the days of Charles Taze Russell. A quick shout out to JW Fax that did an excellent article, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's very good. So make sure you check that out, and also a YouTube video. But one thing I wanted to highlight from that article was this peculiar section of the Watch Jehovah's Witnesses history between 1930 and 1968, where they did go as far as showing Jesus whenever they portrayed him as being completely clean shaven and then of course they have the old classic of you know new light becomes old light only to get re-reversed they hit him with the reverse uno card and blam then they go back to the distorted light that we have today but yeah i did find that pretty interesting that between 1930 and 1968 even their portrayal of jesus showed him being completely clean shaven gillette style Joseph Rutherford was quite the interesting man and a very important figure when you're looking at Watchtower's history because he definitely left his mark on the organization. He was dynamic and could not be intimidated. Yet not everyone appreciated these traits, even among the Bible students. Brother Rutherford, he was an entirely different personality brusque in manner, and uh, he didn't fear to tread on anyone's toes. I think this had a tremendous test on the brothers, because they were really worshipping the creature more than the creator. <laughs> Rutherford directed that Russell's notes for a seventh volume of studies in the scriptures be compiled into a new book called The Finished Mystery. On the day that the book was completed and he had a supply in his office, he arranged for the brothers to put one at each table place in the dining room. And so when the family came down to eat, each one had a copy of the book, The Finished Mystery. Some were quite curious about it and wondered what it was all about and enthused about it. But there was already a growing tension in the family because some of the responsible brothers sort of resented Brother Rutherford. Some of them had ambitions for themselves. So they used the occasion to bring accusations against Brother Rutherford for having gone ahead and published this without their permission and their knowledge. And the result was eventually about a five-hour tirade against Brother Rutherford, where a number brought a lot of unjust accusations against him. Brother Macmillan tells that, well, that day they left the dining room and most of the food was uneaten and the family was very sad. They were previously called Bible students. He introduced Jehovah's Witnesses. They previously celebrated holidays. All of those went away. I don't know if all of them went away, but I think most of them went away, most notably birthdays and uh, Mother's Day and Christmas. And then you had changes to the doctrine that were coming about. No longer did they believe that the pyramids of Giza were actually built under the instruction of God. And anything he could do to try and distance himself from his predecessor, uh, the first president of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, he was trying to distance himself from C.T. Russell. And one of the big ones is the optics. How did C.T. Russell look? He had quite the infamous beard, and Rutherford was very clean-shaven. And that was another way that he insisted on, or another thing that he insisted on. And you can see why. He was a man of trying to centralize power. He got rid of the elected elder arrangement and just had appointed directors that answered directly to a watchtower in New York. So he was someone that wanted to have an iron fist, basically. He wanted to absolutely rule and have everything be done in a very meticulous way, and he wanted it to be done his way, or you need to get out of my way. <laughs> And for me, this is one of the most powerful things that you can do to wake yourself up or to sort of shake off your watchtower indoctrination and even potentially demonstrate how man-made this organization is. 
look throughout history and see how it just changes with leadership. It's not new light from God. It's the musings and whims of whoever might be in charge of the organization at any given time. And to me, that is very powerful because as a Jehovah's Witness, I was fully convinced that this organization was being run by God. And yet, when I looked into it, when I did the research, when I looked at the own, my own history that I was so proud of, what I came away with was this thing just changes all the time based on who's ruling it. And beards are another victim of that same thing. It doesn't matter what's in the Bible. It doesn't matter what might be logical or reasonable. It doesn't, might, it doesn't matter what precedents we might be able to derive from Scripture. The most important factor is who is leading the organization today. Now, this isn't just going to affect Jehovah's Witnesses in the fact that it's a preference thing and they're having their liberties taken away from them, but it can also be more serious. There was a brother in one of the congregations that I served in that had, uh-oh, um, I don't want to just call it razor bumps or ingrown hairs. It's a folliculitis barber, bu- bu- something something to that effect. You, you guys, when you look it up, you know what I'm talking about. But it's a skin condition where when he shaved, uh, it would just get infected and it would be really, really, really bad. And the elder body insisted. They, they insisted that, hey, you need to keep a, a clean shaven face despite that it was hurting his skin so, so bad. And it was really sad to see because his face was just not in a good way. And it was as a direct result of him being a Jehovah's Witness and having a very hard-nosed elder body that didn't want to put up with any nonsense. They were the Rutherford style of elders. And they absolutely made this man's life completely miserable because trying to maintain this look where, okay, well, how close can I do it? And to where it doesn't have, it was a real pain for him. And not, I'm not just saying like, oh, that's a pain in the ass, but it was a real pain for him in order to be able to handle this. And the, the amazing thing to me is that why, why can't they just have any exceptions in their minds? And now I know that they do say, well, you can go in the ministry, you can uh, be on the theocratic ministry school and all of that. That has not been my personal experience. So maybe that's different depending on where you are in the country or what congregations that you've attended. But at the very minimum, we can say that this person's life was adversely um, affected in, in a physical way because of Watchtower's silly little rules. If they never said anything about beards, if they never made any comments, if they never had any any comment on beards whatsoever, this person's life would have immediately improved. If New Light came down the pipeline saying, hey, we're okay with a well-trimmed beard, bingo, bango, bongo, he would be good to go. But unfortunately, that's not the case. That will conclude another episode of Watchtower versus the Bible. Uh, please comment down below and let me know what you would like me to uh, do a little dive into for the next one. I think the uh, channel going forward, I'm going to try and focus on doing more series like this. So I have a couple planned and I want to start like uh, filming and getting them out there. And uh, yes, I do have one thing. I have a big skit that uh, a lot of work has gone into it. And so I'm just going to be finishing that up. Just some of the sound stuff and music stuff just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But yeah, that will be coming out pretty soon. So uh, yeah, we'll get hype for that. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the funny content. And I will see you next time.